Hi! This tutorial will cover the basics of creating glass or carbon fiber parts with a mold and a vacuum pump. Uh, we use this mold. I've created it to form the housing of the battery pack for my electric longboard. Uh, after applying glass fiber, the resin and other layers to the mold, we will place it in a plastic bag that is tightly sealed. And in the last step, we bleed off the air using a vacuum pump like this. You will see most of the process in a time lapse. And doing this, I try to explain the steps that I take so you understand what I am doing. And now you know what to expect. Let's start. This piece of wood is the underlay for the mold. It's important that it's absolutely flat. I covered the top with several layers of PVA mold release agent. You can apply PVA with a brush and it creates a thin foil-like layer on top of the wood, so it's easy to separate the finished part from the underlay. Since the stuff is kind of toxic, always make sure to wear gloves when working with epoxy resins. The mold is made from wood. I sanded all the surfaces, varnished it with stopper and added some layers of PVA. Here I put some cling foil to the places I didn't use body filler on. It's supposed to prevent the resin from creeping into the gaps. When mixing epoxy, make sure you get the ratio right, otherwise it won't be as tough as it should. Since I love black, I added some color paste to the mixture. It's very important you blend the components thoroughly. Now I'm going to get the first pre-cut mat. It's a woven tissue with a weight of 160 gram per square meter. I remove the excess tissue to ease the handling when wrapping the material around the mold. Now it's time to get serious. When applying the resin, spread it out from the middle. Try to avoid wrinkles and air bubbles beneath the tissue. Don't add too much resin. You don't want puddles of it, just enough to soak the tissue. The part I left out does cover a cavity that is supposed to house a removable cap, so it doesn't need resin. The epoxy I used does cure in 40 minutes. Since I had to add 3 layers of tissue, I tried to work as fast as possible without making mistakes. The best way to handle edges is by cutting the material in the appropriate places before you add the resin to the edges, so you are able to wrap it around the mold without wrinkles. When your cut was right, you can just fold the excess tissue around the corner. I reinforce the bottom lid with an extra piece of glass fiber to make sure the edges are strong. And use the same strategy for the remaining edges. It's very effective to place all the tools and stuff you need on the bench before you start laminating. The same applies for pre-cut fiber mats. When your resin starts to cure, time is of an essence. After finishing the process, I added a second layer of the same material. Since it's the same procedure, we will directly jump to the application of the third layer. It consists of a very heavy woven glass fiber that weighs in about 400 gram per square meter. It is supposed to make the structure strong and stiff, but is much harder to handle when applying it to the mold. At this point my resin was empty. I had to make a new mixture very quick since I came closer to the 40 minutes mark. Uh, 
and it's clear to see that the heavier fiber is harder to tame, especially when applying it to edgy molds like mine. With more time I would have built a mold with a rounder shape, but this would have included a lot of sanding and I wanted to finish the case in a fast manner, so here I go. Reinforcing the edges like before. And in the past, when I was fiberglassing without the vacuum bag, it was very hard to keep the tissue stick to the mold and I was never satisfied with the outcome. When using vacuum molding, some imperfections here and there are totally okay, because the vacuum bag will make sure that the fiberglass is tightly pressed against the mold. So now, close to the finish, uh, we add a layer of peel ply followed by a layer of perforated release film and some paper towels. Next time I add them after the mold is in the bag. Um, the peel ply is like a fine net that does not stick to the resin. It gives your part a nice structured surface and can be released after the resin has cured. The release film and the soles allow the excess resin to be soaked up by the paper towels. This allows for a high percentage of fibers in your finished part, held together by a minimum amount of resin. Now you see me add a vacuum hose with a steel wool pad. The pad is supposed to keep the hose open while squeezed together under the atmospheric pressure. I seal one half of the bag with double sided tape and the other half with a butyl string. It's important to have a tight seal all around. And finally it is time to activate the pump. Now you see the atmospheric pressure pushing the bag tightly against the mold. Where the black dots appear, excess resin is soaked through the peel ply and the release film. In between, I shut off the pump to be able to further squeeze the vacuum bag into the edges of the mold. By the way, I use ordinary garbage bags for vacuum molding, I just make sure they are really airtight. Afterwards, I left the pump running for at least 8 hours. At that point the resin is hard enough to not lose its shape. Further it was 10 pm and I can't afford to set up my neighbors, the pump is quite loud when it's running. The next day, after more than 20 hours of curing, I started to release the part from the mold. At first I removed the back, then the paper towels soaked with resin then the release film and afterwards the peel ply. Since I covered the underlay with PVA, it's quite easy to remove the mold from it. Now you see the housing removed from the mold. I inspect the results and am quite happy. So now you know how to create uh, glass fiber parts with a vacuum mold. I don't think the process is that hard at all. You just have to work exactly to make sure the outcome is right. And I can show you the finished housing. It's attached to my electric longboard and keeps 32 batteries in place. And behind this cover I have my anti-spark plug to switch it on and off. And after 150 kilometers it's still holding up pretty good. The only thing I would improve is uh, in the next version I have to reinforce the parts here where the, where the screws sit and hold the pack in the middle to the board. But besides that everything is very nice. At the end I will show you some pictures. What the housing looks from the inside completed with the batteries. How I connected them. And if you like this content, subscribe to the channel. Have a nice day.
Don't be shy, just try. <laughs> Yo, Hapsen Rapsen. <laughs>